ultimate soldier. It doesn't get happy, it doesn't get sad, it doesn't laugh at your jokes. It is quite simply Jim. the most sophisticated robot on Earth. Tonic. At Nova Robotics, the future is in good hands. You're doing real good. Just keep working on those last two bars. Thanks to Dr. Newton Crosby. Originally, I designed it as a marital aid. But artificial intelligence has gotten too smart. Yo. It's malfunctioning. It might not do anything. But it could decide to blow away anything that moves, couldn't it? Because $11 million worth of robot just hit the road. Whoa! Number five is alive. Welcome to my planet. You just have to find number five, get some answers. Why don't you come on in my house? And it's got a lot of living to do. Whatever it takes to put that stupid contraption out of commission, that's what you do. Me input. <laughs> Stuff. More input. More input. And they can seem quite lifelike, but they are still machines. Oh. Number five is alive. Nice software. Huh? How it happens, who knows, but it has happened. A new comedy adventure from John Badham, the director of War Games. We're gonna be after you. We gotta get out of here now. Keep hey. alive! Ah! Ali Sheedy. Steve Gutenberg and number five. Beautiful. Short circuit. I am alive. I knew they'd pick me. I just knew it. At age six, she was performing ballet at the Lincoln Center. At 12, she wrote a best-selling children's book. And today, at 23, Ali Sheedy is one of Hollywood's most respected young actresses. Her current role is featured in the new film, Short Circuit. Can I call you right back? Thanks. In the film, Ali portrays a young woman who drives a catering truck and befriends a top-secret robot who has come to life. It is a role that she has often dreamed about playing. I've always wanted to do some kind of a fantasy where you get to work with a puppet or a make-believe character. For Allie, this meant creating a life for her mechanical friend within her own imagination. When we're doing the scenes, it, all I see is, is, is him, and he's so alive that um, it just, it sort of takes every single little thing in you. I mean, I have to create everything no, myself, and no, it's just a great challenge. Allie made her screen debut as Sean Penn's girlfriend in the film Bad Boys. Since that time, she's appeared in many other films, notably The Breakfast Club and St. Elmo's Fire. I'd like to play a lot of different kinds of characters. I'd like to really be challenged as an actress, and, um, and each role it has been a challenge. Dancing pool, big finish. Short Circuit also marks the reunion of Ali with director John Badham, whom she worked with on the hit film War Games. This time, however, Badham witnessed a new Ali Sheedy. A very good beginning actress has gotten even better and more polished and more comfortable. Their friendship has also had a settling effect on Ali, giving her a bit of added confidence. It feels really good to be doing a scene knowing that he's right there watching. I, I like it a lot. In her spare time, Allie is a serious writer and poet. And like her character Stephanie, she loves animals. As far as her future career aspirations, her goals are simple. I just want to keep growing in my work and taking my classes and doing my stuff. And hopefully the roles that come along will be the ones that I'm really ready to play at that exact moment. It's Crosby, Newton Crosby. Seven years ago, Steve Gutenberg was a messenger in New York. Today, he is delivering top performances as one of Hollywood's most versatile young actors. In his newest film, Short Circuit, he portrays a genius scientist who creates an amazing robot. I love acting, and I, I love being able to portray someone uh, and give reality to someone who's not real, someone who's fictitious. Gutenberg first gained national attention in the film Diner. Recently, he has been seen in such hits as Cocoon and the Police Academy movies. He also starred in television's highly acclaimed movie, The Day After. You have to look at each film as you would look at a person. Each person is different. Each film is different. Uh, Dr. Love, I'd like to get my robot back. But she's scared. Steve co-stars in the film with Ali Sheedy. And what impresses Ali is his easygoing style off the screen. 
Steve has a very great attitude and he's really happy and he's very infectious and I just like being around him. And cut. One of the main okay. reasons Gutenberg uh, yeah. accepted his role was the opportunity to work with director John Badham, whose credits include Saturday Night Fever, War Games, and Blue Thunder. When he talks, the smart thing to do is listen, because he knows how to make a movie. He knows how to make it great. It's too big. It's, yeah. it's almost crybaby time, but just, just keep it real strong. And strong, okay. Oh, Howard, okay, look, it's malfunctioning! Cast as the designer of Number 5, a high-tech robot, Steve knew his biggest challenge would be to bring life to an inanimate object. I'm going to be dealing with something that's not real. And what my job is, is to make it real to the audience and real to myself. After a few scenes working together, Steve felt that number five was not a machine, but simply a fellow player. Number five is really terrific to work with because he's really lifelike and animated. And his eyes move and his everything moves on him. So it's very, very easy to act with him. Anybody tried the homing device yet? As an actor, Gutenberg's sole purpose is to please the audience, and he hopes his work in short circuit will do just that. Whether you're seven years old, whether you're 30, whether you're 90, I think that there's something in this movie for everybody. I am alive. Just take him coming over over here. Yeah. John Badham is a true Hollywood success story. Starting in the mailroom at Universal Studios, he went on to direct such films as War Games, Blue Thunder, and Saturday Night Fever. He enjoys orchestrating large scenes, such as this one in his newest film, Short Circuit. This is great. I mean, this is fun. You don't have to deal with real people here. You just blow things up. It's, uh, it's exciting. Despite the pressures of schedule and budget, Bannon maintains a youthful sense of humor on the set. Now sit on the perch. And be cool, okay? Wherever you put it, I'll just, I'll get out of your way. He said bravely. Action! Hey, we weren't supposed to have live guys in there. Short Circuit reunites John with one of the stars of War Games, Ali Sheedy. It also stars Steve Gutenberg from Cocoon, who's excited to be able to work with one of Hollywood's best. There's only about maybe 15 or 20 great directors in Hollywood, and he's one of them. Okay. Bannum's reputation is largely based on knowing a good script when he reads one. Such was the case with Short Circuit. I think within uh, an hour of finishing the script, I said, let's go, let's do it. And the last time I felt that way about a script was on War Games and on uh, Saturday Night Fever. In addition to the humans, the film stars number five a futuristic military robot that short circuits and comes to life. And though Batum enjoys working with mechanical gadgets, dealing with a robot was a major challenge. If you think that you're gonna suddenly have this robot come gliding out onto the stage and crush some ice and mix you a gin and tonic, well, you better come back from outer space because you're not in the real world. Meanwhile, John Batum has brought life to a story that is sure to appeal to audiences both young and old. Gin. Heavy duty smoke. All right, and action. Well, this is very strange. You won't talk to me. You sure number five is operational? Yeah, as far as I know. Okay, let's try a little emergency override. No. Well, then, there you go. I'm glad you think this is all such a joke. Oh, don't worry, Scrooter. You're not going to miss a meal. Let's just shut it down, pick it up. Right. Interrupt primary power. Unable. I'd like to write the headline on that. None so. No, Howard, look, it's malfunctioning. Okay, fine. But, Howard, think about it. What a malfunction. None so. Okay, fine. Right. It's malfunction, but Howard, please. Th think what about function? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. What about function? Scroder, 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 Scroder. I want you to get your team together. Dude, notice. Try to contain number five as best you what? can. All right, Howard. Maybe we can still avoid an incident. I'm already moving. And Scroder, what? You understand? You do not have to blow it up. You don't it? have to blow it up. Try and bring it back in one piece. Try and bring it back in one piece. All right, Howard. Maybe can still avoid an incident. I'm already moving. And, and Scroder, what? You understand. 
do not have to blow it up. You do not have to blow it up. They, they try and bring it back in one piece. One piece, Grover. He's not playing with full depth. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, we ready, fellas? Yeah. Okay, good. Is the laser still up there? No, he's gone. All right. And we're rolling, please. Feeding. A and B combo markers. And roll, please. Speeding. Yeah, Speeding. Okay, ready? Go ahead, Allie, please. If I show you where he is, do I have your word? You will not experiment on him, you will not flip his switches, and you will not take him apart. Yes, you have my word. Okay, well, that helps. That helps, and... and um, so that's a start mark, Pat, right here. Right by 750. Come down about a foot, okay? Uh, Johnny Lund. Swagger, Christy, Wrestling Village, Three Stooges. There Did you ever go. get enough? Curly Moe. Okay. Here it comes towards you. Here it comes and it's going over your head, over your head, and off and around. Okay, now back around toward me. Around toward me. I think within uh, an hour of finishing the script, I said, let's go, let's do it. And the last time I felt that way about a script was on War Games and on uh, Saturday Night Fever. You know, a real strong, positive feeling about the material. Well, that's very good for me because that allows me to bring a lot of enthusiasm to it and excitement. We've designed a robot that is way beyond the state of the art of current robotics. It will be decades before you could really have a robot that could do what we're saying this robot does. Our robot, he's actually gonna have to be able to perform. It's not gonna just be a matter of uh, pushing some buttons and having a kind of an arm move into position. It'll actually have to be able to perform, and I think that's what'll make it real special. The robot's designed to be a foot soldier, a robotic substitute for a foot soldier. And in our story, if the people who made it are successful, they'll build several million of them, or several hundred thousand, to substitute for uh, foot soldiers. And so we had to have something that would answer those kind of design requirements, something that would be able to get over all kinds of terrain that would be able to deal with a lot of the things that a foot soldier has to deal with. I think we need to round these corners off, too, okay. so it doesn't quite look like such a such rectangular square. Right. And this might have some good bite on it, but right now it looks like a little bit what it is. Right. And to get some more of the naturalness like the tires have that, that mm -hmm. you have will be great. OK. All right. Well, that's terrific. I'll make a note of that. Yet, at the same time, you want to have a certain kind of anthropomorphic look, looking like man, in a way that, uh, that makes sense from a robotic standpoint. What do we got in here, the hand? The hand. All right. Uh, now we had this. Uh, looks good. How you doing, Rick? Good, how are you doing? Okay. Last time we had met, we had talked about the fact that the fingers were a bit wide. Now this will be able to delicately pick things up off of a bench and then he'll be able to turn them around and examine them. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and as well, we'd be able to adjust the hands so that the hands come by like this, so he could grab around like a pole, for instance. Yeah, for instance. Yeah, yeah. As well as he'll be able to actually just get his fingers out of the way, yeah. open his whole hand up, and that's like the industrial strength gripper that could just crush tubing or crush, yeah. crush like metal. Yeah, right in here, right. Like, like that. That could really hurt you there. Okay. Now, this is the wrist actuator. Correct. This does the same thing as the wrist. And then it also turns. So the hand will actually connect right on the end of this and then be activated like so. Back and, forth right, and then it'll have roll as like well. That. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the action is real nice on that. Right, they're real fluid. And yeah. when you compound that with the subtle finger movement, you know, it'll be like a real, you can be back in and do all kinds of hand gestures. Uh-huh. So this is the shoulder and the upper body right. part here. This is the shoulder part here. Correct. OK, how's this going to work now? OK, we just got this actuator mounted in here. And this is going to go up and down like so. Oh, that's great. That really works great. This has a lot of torque, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Actually, this actuator has 150 pounds of push or pull. Yeah. And about, with our mechanical disadvantage, we have like 50 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's real strong. It's quite a bit more uh, potential than we're anticipating needing. What we see so far is the possibilities for personality. Until we really get into it and start to move it and operate it, uh, and have it go around, that's when we'll see the personality come out. And that'll be an exciting day to see what will happen. The, there will be a lot of things, I bet, that will happen that we don't expect. We didn't realize that it would tilt its head in a certain way or do certain things that will be very cute. This is really critical to work because the whole personality of the robot is, is in this area. And, and so we want to get this to get as much personality so we can we can get a little bit of eyebrow lift or something like this, and mm -hmm. we'll hopefully see how, how it works, and he can get, we can get some surprise or shock or whatever he does uh, in here. You know, trying to make this thing react like a human being is real tough. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we get the puppeteer working with it and, and really make him come alive, because I think there's a big difference you know, with us sitting looking at, at this mock-up and, and how the... Uh, how he's going to come alive. So we can get a good, you know, mean sort of Darth Vader look like this, and then, uh, and then it's kind of surprise or some kind of questioning look. Well, that'll be good to see how that works. It, you know, 90% of the personality is in the head right here. Look out. Watch out. Ah! Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. All is not failed. Let's give it a shot, Eric. All right. See? <laughs> Nothing stops him, OK? <laughs> That's incredible. Number five is a strange combination of, uh, of special effects and robotics and all kinds of techniques. And number five is going to be a person. I mean, he will be a character that, that you'll fall in love with. The main thing in a film is if you really like the character and care what that character wants, the main character, you're probably going to like the film. You know, if you get involved in what uh, number five wants in the film, and in this case is to be alive, to be considered alive, be recognized as alive, and you like this, this character, then th that's half the battle right there. This could really do very well. I mean, this has tremendous appeal. I don't want to play characters that are really involved in a lot of drama and all this kind of stuff. It's not that, it's just that every time I get to work at a problem of a character. I get to work at something inside me, too. And it's basically about a, a robot that comes to life and about all the people that love him and the people that want to destroy him. And uh, it's just a terrific story. It really makes me very, very happy. People may get nervous being around 
this big mechanical thing at first, and then they get very loose very quickly. Steve was very nervous the first day he was around it, but uh, it was no time at all, and he was having a great time. They're telling each other jokes, and they're, they're, they're having fun. You know the old adage, never work with children or animals, and now we can add robots to that, I think. <laughs> if you don't want to be upstage, I think.